Yes, uh, thank you very much, Isabel. And thank you all for being here for me to share, share the exciting news that my short story collection, No One Has Any Intention of Building a Wall, is going to be published in November. Um, I'm going to say a little bit about the collection, then read a bit. And then if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And if you're not, if you haven't got any questions, I'm happy to go on reading. So um, whatever, however this works out. But I wanted to say a quick shout out, and I know Claire's here and David was here earlier and, and we've had Louise for this absolutely amazing season that um, Fly on the Wall's putting on. Um, these are, Fly on the Wall put on, uh, that's the short season and, and as, as short stories coming out in a pamphlet every couple of months. And these are really good stories and I've been absolutely loving it and can't wait for the next one I can't, um, to come out and certainly can't wait for Claire's to come out. So looking forward to that. Um, but back to the collection that I'm supposed to be talking about. Um, no one has any intention of building a wall and um, takes its title from the, the story in the collection, which is about the sudden and to many shocking uh, erection of the Berlin Wall overnight in August 1961. And it was particularly shocking as the head of the East Germany at the time, Walter Ulbricht, had given the re fake reassurance in June 61, only two months before the city was divided. Um, that no one had any intention of building a wall. So the people of the city were not expecting it. Um, uh, many people were not expecting it. Um, and while this that story is about a physical wall, um, all the stories in the collection sort of deal with division and separation in some way. Um, and whether it is a literal division of a wall or someone not being in the right place, or the main character becoming isolated from their society because of who they are, of what they've experienced and how they think of themselves. All these ways that people get separated from their society. And that's what really interests me, that sense of isolation and people becoming on the outside. Um, so the title again is, is appropriate, not just for that story, but for the whole um, collection, because frequently no one does have any intention of building a wall. But walls are just formed by the laws or the norms or expectations of those around us. And those walls go up without us um, having any uh, thought about them and they stay in place, unlike the Berlin Wall, which came down. Um, many of the stories in the um, collection are set in specific places in Berlin, uh, Prague, Krakow. Um, Iceland, even the A303. And I, the reason I like setting things in a specific place is because I can delve into the politics of the places, uh, the, the past and current politics, the history, the geography, the atmospheres, and those social norms of a time and place. Um, uh, people say travel broadens the mind, and to be, be quite frank, for me, writing broadens the mind, and thank goodness we've got writing at the moment because there ain't no travel. So, just talk a little bit about the um, title story and then I will um, read a bit. Um, the title story um, is about, uh, I was thinking about Berlin's history and its wall. And for many years, that physical separation of the city, which ended to great jubilation in 1989, that separated families and it set a political division in concrete that really, to some extent, was the brutal and logical conclusion of the centuries long battles between Europe's powers. And um, so that wall going up to me is, um, has particular resonances today with where we find ourselves. Um, but with that division um, playing around in my head, the massive political ideological division at the time and the resulting personal, um, intensely personal divisions it caused, I was driven to write this story. So uh, I'll read the story and then if anyone's got any questions, please do ask. <clears throat> No one has any intention of building a wall. It's 5.30 p.m. on Saturday the 12th of August 1961 and Gabi Liebknecht is standing outside her mother's apartment on Bernauerstrasse, Berlin, leaning against a pockmarked wall. Casually, she glances at the house opposite where Peter lives. Peter is 15 and has blonde hair and blue eyes. Two days ago, he stopped to ask her name. She hasn't seen him since and now she thinks he must be out. Click clack. Around the corner come two French soldiers, guns over their shoulders. Click clack, click clack. Gabby rests a foot behind her on the wall. One of the soldiers slows as he approaches. Gabby, her mother, grandmother calls down from an open window. Come and help. The soldier smiles down at Gabby and says something. Gabby doesn't speak French. Now, Gabby. Coming, Omar, Gabby calls. The soldier repeats what is said. 
all the words running into one like a waterfall. She smiles back. Now, Gabby, she mimics. The soldier laughs and rests his hand briefly on her shoulder before striding off to catch up with his colleague. She watches the pair turn into a Rupinastrasse, the heat of his palm still on her skin.